Hi, I just wanted to share some thoughts about correct data modeling in Power BI, and this also applies to SQL Server Analysis Services, Tabular, or Azure Analysis Services. It's a well-known fact that the most correct schema for data in Power BI in a tabular data model is a star schema. And a star schema consists of fact tables and dimension tables. And then there may be some exceptional tables that bridge data together and formulate many-to-many -many relationships or do lookups and that kind of thing. But for the most part, it's a fairly simple concept. Fact tables contain nothing but numeric columns that become the basis for measures and then keys that then help us relate that table to conformed dimension tables. Simple concept on the surface, but oftentimes when I work with uh, with consulting clients or I work with colleagues, I work with other professionals in the industry, they'll say, yeah, but our data is not shaped that way. Our data is not in a star schema, therefore we have an exception. And what we discover uh, by doing assessments and proofs of concept is that most of the time that data can be shaped into a star schema. And most of the time, I would say 95 times out of 100, that data can be reshaped. It may not be an easy thing to do. It may require a lot of investment. It might mean that we have to go back to source systems and, and uh, implement a more rigorous uh, ETL or ELT process, stage that data and reshape it. But that often is the right answer. Now, when is it not the right answer? In the case where we have um, people who say, yeah, but we, we have a table that has 60 columns and, and it's transactional detail level data. So A, we can't summarize it, and B, we can't weed out all of the unnecessary columns that would make it slow and cumbersome and, and difficult to report on. That describes an operational reporting need. And Power BI is optimized for analytic reporting, not operational reporting. So two options there. One, use the right tool to do operational reporting. Don't use Power BI if you're creating operational reports. Now, that's not to say that you can't create some operational level or detail level reports with Power BI, but you really need to step back and ask yourself, is this the right tool to meet that need? Perhaps the right tool is to use Power BI paginated reports or SQL Server reporting services to do that transactional level, you know, very two-dimensional style of reporting. Paginated reports can work with Power BI, and oftentimes people say, yeah, but you know, they this is the tool set that I have. I'm a Power BI person, and that's the that's the, the tool that we want to use. I, I would challenge that. Um, Secondly, we can use Power BI to do some detail level reporting through drill through actions and using visuals just like a table or a matrix. But think about the compromise of bringing in a table that has lots and lots of columns. It's going to slow things down. It's going to use more memory. It's not going to compress well. Therefore, a common pattern would be to bring in, let's say it's a customer table. So that forms a dimension table and we don't want to have uh, you know, a bunch of columns that we're not going to use. So import that customer table and only bring in the, you know, let's say eight or 10 columns that we need to form hierarchies and, and uh, to be used as dimensional attributes for slicing, filtering, and grouping. And then create a direct query to that same source table that includes the 60 columns. And then you can use that in a table or a matrix visual within a Power BI report page, and you get the best of both worlds. You're not importing, so you use direct query at the right time and in the right way, but then for your analytic reporting, you have that data cached. It's very slim and, and conservative. The concepts of dimensional modeling and using relationships to propagate filters within Power BI 
are really comparable to working with the laws of physics. Oftentimes when I hear people say, well, yeah, that's not we, what we want to do. We don't want to reshape our data into facts and dimensions. We don't want to create relationships in a conventional way. That's like saying, well, I don't like that gravity constrains me. I don't like that there are these physical properties that force us to design things in a certain way. Whether you're launching rockets or building bridges, we have to work with the laws of physics. Otherwise, things are going to blow up and fall down. Data behaves the same way. It behaves a certain way through relationships, keys, data types, and uh, designing things using the right types of schemas. When you break the rules, you pay the price and things don't work. Therefore, you have to back up the bus a little bit, think about the right pattern to implement from the beginning, and then you're going to have more options down the road. These are often difficult decisions for someone who's very close to the data to make because you're kind of working within a limited perspective. You know, if you're a, 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 a transactional database person who you're used to working with the data in a certain shape and in a certain way, you, you're kind of bound by that perspective. And so it can be very valuable to step back and have somebody else look at the problem, look at the set of data from their perspective and they may, may be able to offer options and, and you know design options that wouldn't be apparent to somebody who is closer to the problem and that person could be a colleague who has experience uh, you know they could be another employee it could be a consultant as a consultant oftentimes we walk into an environment not having that that close perspective and that gives us the advantage of stepping back and looking at a problem in a different way so just get another pair of eyes uh, code share and uh, get a different perspective from someone else that will often let you consider options that you wouldn't have considered otherwise.